We're gathered together in the heart of our nation's capital. The siege on the capital, fueled by conspiracy theories. Our election victory stolen by radical left Democrats. They rigged an election. They rigged it like they've never rigged an election before. That have defined Trump's presidency. Now those ideas, which used to be on the fringe, are in the mainstream. Conspiratorial thinking is a feature of this president. Now on Frontline, United States of Conspiracy. This program contains mature content. Viewer discretion is advised. Ladies and gentlemen, it is 10.39 Central Standard Time, 11.39 Eastern. I'm Roger Stone. Uh, works in four administrations, been involved in nine campaigns. He's here tonight. It's a moment of enormous tension. I'm working the phones very aggressively, uh, working my contacts. But I gotta shake your hand. What a strong showing regardless. I was in the studio with Alex Jones and Roger on election day, and the metrics were off the charts about how many people were tuning into InfoWars, numbers that were comparable to the networks. Alex Jones, extremist conspiracy theorist, had rallied his audience behind Donald Trump. Is saying Trump is projected to win. As the night drew on, it became clearer and clearer that Trump was likely to win. It is officially over Pennsylvania. Has been called. They had no idea whatsoever that Trump was going to win. You've talked to the Trump campaign. All of a sudden, everybody was super elated. <laughs> we had some staff members that was just running around the office in a big circle. I mean, people were like, ah! I mean, going crazy that night. Uh, you see him right there. He's going to be Here, speaking cheers. momentarily. Love you. He's got Love his you guys. Right there. Of all you. There was a combination of elation and confusion. And they realized that, oh my God, we just played a role in making the president of the United States. Here goes Trump. He's there with Turn it up, Donald J. Trump. Uh, he's going up to the microphones. Uh, he's going to be the golden uh, toad. I assume he'll mention the phone call he received. Get ready. He, he charges into a goblin's nest. This is amazing. As long as he doesn't, President-elect of the United. As long as he doesn't kiss a goblin, goblins vomit. Got him in bed with a goblin. Your name is Donald. I don't think there's any danger of that. No, he defeated the goblins. He did it. <laughs> Stone and Jones believed that they had been instrumental in getting Donald Trump elected or that certainly they had driven successful narratives that helped to, that helped to get him elected. I was exhausted, but euphoric. Jones was exhausted, but he was downcast. It's almost three o'clock in the morning, central time. And we now have president-elect Donald Trump. And I asked him why. And he said, you don't understand. This is just the beginning. Now we are bound forever. And if we don't deliver this plan and free humanity, we will be bound to the ninth circle of hell. I'm bound to this truth and I will never stop delivering. In that moment, it was visible that there was a reaction because he started crying. I mean, his emotions were evident. They were streaming down his face. I've said it. I've already run my course. I already know my entire life purpose has been completed. I will continue on. But now, I realize I've won. Alex Jones is part of a bigger phenomenon. What people like Alex Jones and others showed us is that conspiracy theories are an effective political tool. They work. They help shape elections. They help shape public discussion. They help people decide what to believe. Conspiracy theories work. All across the country, you will see a lot of conspiracy theories out there. Alex Jones helped usher in a new and dangerous era in American politics. American conspiracy theories are entering a dangerous new phase. One where the truth doesn't matter. COVID-19 is a joy-com globalist bio-weapon. Where political opponents treat each other as mortal enemies. Hillary Clinton is a damn demon. Where lies and conspiracies flourish. Pizzagate is real. Sandy Hook, it's got inside job written all of the united states of conspiracy disinformation
information is having a devastating effect. The same conspiracy theory that are being circulated. The story of how Alex Jones helped bring conspiracies into the mainstream began on the fringes of America in the 1990s. All right, Austin, I... Uh, he was a late-night access TV personality in Austin, Texas, an obscure voice peddling outrage. They are trying to make you dysfunctional. They are teaching you false thought systems. He began okay. as sort of an underground okay. phenomenon. Society is insane to me, so I am insane to your average dumbbell. You know, people in Austin would sit home and get high in the middle of the night and watch this crazy guy vent about crazy stuff. Hillary Clinton is a fascist worker. Unhinged conspiracy theory rants. Biological attack is imminent, imminent. Political stunts. They took me into custody and were going to arrest me for disturbing a public meeting. He was on the fringe. It used to be that you would have to be somebody who was deep deep into conspiracy culture to know who Alex Jones was. You'd have to know things about lizard people or teleportation pads, uh, these crazy, crazy conspiracy theories. What about me because I'm a woman? I've got to stay. Yeah. British yeah. filmmaker John Ronson is a renowned expert on extremism. He has been following Jones for more than 20 years. Um, he was diagnosed as having narcissistic personality disorder. And I, I think that's a factor because I think that People with NPD don't need to care as much about the truth um, and about society as, as other people do. Um, I think they consider themselves more important than the truth. Jones promoted anti-government conspiracy theories in a series of homemade films. He'd also use a growing radio show to allege, without evidence, secret plots in crisis after crisis. The federal government financed and controlled this attack on the World Trade Center to sick. The 1993 World Trade Center bombing. Multiple bombs ripped through the Alfred P. Murrow Federal Building. The 1995 Oklahoma City bombing. And as usual, federal fingerprints were all over this tragic event. He called them false flags. A big element of Alex Jones's show and his theorizing generally is that things are false flag attacks. Um, that is, attacks perpetrated by the government or elements within the government to create fear, suspicion, division, or to bring us all under the sinister control of the New World Order or the One World Government. To create yet another crisis, this time to usher in a police state. Jones's rhetoric resonated with people around the country who were looking for answers. Conspiracy theory is a theory. It's an attempt to explain an event. And it says that things are not as they seem, right? And you explain it by picking up the dots forming a pattern and showing that that pattern indicates malignant intent by powerful people acting covertly. Then, a moment of trauma We're on live television. On this Tuesday morning, it's the 11th day of September 2001. As a confused country watched. We want to go live right now and show you a picture of the World Trade Center where I understand, do we have it? No, we do not. We have a breaking story, though. We're going to come back with that in just a moment. First, this is today on NBC. That day, broadcasting from Texas, Jones would seize on the tragedy. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas. Alex was immediately on the radio on all of his syndicated shows. To bring you up to speed on what's happened, at uh, 8.50 a.m. EDT, plane hits World Trade Center. 9.30 Eastern, second jet crashes at the World Trade Center. Saying that this attack is an inside job. Yes, the towers fell, but they were not felled by terrorists. They were destroyed by the United States government as a pretext uh, to impose martial law. Jones and other believers became known as the 9-11 truther movement. Alex became the world's leading 9-11 truther. And actually, everything just got worse and darker. 9-11 conspiracy theorists were 
sort of vicious and brutal. They're either using provocateur Arabs and allowing them to do it, or this is full complicity with the federal government. The evidence is overwhelming to bring you up to speed on what's happened. And, uh, Even for the radio stations that had hosted Jones over the years, he'd gone too far this time. What you see after 9-11 is a country that is really, really hurting. People were grieving, where it was a moment where people wouldn't have imagined that you're gonna take that moment, um, this national moment of mourning, and turn it into a conspiracy theory. I'll tell you the bottom line. 98% chance this was a government-orchestrated control bombing. I've been telling you this was going to happen just two weeks ago. I Overnight, something like two-thirds of all the Genesis stations dumped him. And it seemed like it was going to be a disaster for his career, and at first it was. But it was 2001, and Alex Jones quickly found a new outlet, a new way to reach a like-minded audience, the anarchy of the web. Terrorism is on the way. September 11th was only the latest in a long For the 9-11 truther movement was alive and well. It was the manipulation of that national tragedy um, that really, really opened an eye for Jones about how he could get a hook into his audience. His website, Infowars.com, became a hub for conspiracy theories. We all know a conspiracy theorist from the days before Twitter or Facebook. And those people were sort of isolated and shunned, and everybody felt like they had their number. But with social media and the internet, they find each other. Why the Bush crime family and the CIA? And they can push that message to millions of people. You know why the big CFR The interesting thing about the internet is that it builds community. You can find people who feed into your negativity or your fears or your bigotry. And so that's what Alex Jones has been able to do. I mean, he's been able to mobilize people based on their fears. For many, their ignorance. As the tech giants grew, Facebook, Twitter, Spotify, Instagram, Google's YouTube, so did Alex Jones. Information that you would have been very hard to get before, it suddenly became easy. We're on the right side of history. He wasn't really my cup of tea. It was young men who liked him um, because he was wild and he was funny. Nellie's going, uh, kill everybody. His audience was mostly white men. It became known as Dude Radio. Every week, millions watched his programs. I mean, it's just like scum, Nazi filth. And his trash. conspiracy movies. It was the type of controversial content that generated clicks. The more outrageous, the better. The bigger the lie, the more clicks he got. And YouTube's algorithms recommended his videos billions of times. In the near future, Earth is dominated by a powerful world government. His films got out to millions and millions and millions of people. The dawn of a new dark age is upon mankind. When we put out a film, I remember Endgame, within like something like six or seven days receiving like 30 million views. It was ridiculous. I just remember constantly refreshing and it going up by thousands every time I'd refresh. Charlie's tired of being held up like the devil. We got the TSA putting their hand down people's pants. Infowars.com covers it all. We've got the banks bankrupting the US. Spreading wild conspiracy theories had made Jones a celebrity. But one question would not go away. How much of what Alex says on the radio does he really believe? And is Alex really crazy? If he's not crazy, and he says crazy things on the radio and on TV and on YouTube every day in order to exploit other people who are crazy to make money for himself, then that doesn't look good at all. Announce DNA force, ladies and gentlemen. But it didn't matter to Jones or his audience. He had found a winning formula. He is the exemplar of a conspiracy entrepreneur. There's a whole new industry that's grown up. That's my second dose today. I need to take it easy. <laughs> he sells, you know, potency pills. He's into virility and he sells body armor. 
and gold and other things. At Infowars.com, they sold gold, pills, and fear. He was smart because he correctly realized that he had to sell a product. Wars are not cheap. Go check out the amazing specials. Especially a survivalist product that people thought they would need under the coming, you know, nightmarish new world government was uh, very prescient. Alex, overnight, made a huge amount of money. I mean, somebody told me that he was bringing in like $100,000 a day. I will only give you the it was rock star money. He decided to live like one. We went from the little house to the slightly bigger house to a really nice house to multiple houses. And you get all this money, and Alex always wanted more and more and more. And I was like, Alex, what are you doing? We don't even do these things. Somewhere along the line, he started making an awful lot of money. And so once that started happening, even if he had stopped becoming a believer, there was a very powerful incentive to continue doing what he was doing. I will go to, I will go to hell before I sit here and I watch this country and the world turned over to these savages. Jones's audience was insatiable and he delivered. You, let me tell you something, you filthy traitors in the government, you pieces of crap. More conspiracy, more controversy, more crisis. So I'm, I've had enough of these people. Okay, so I've been containing this for the last week. That's why I've been in here sweating. If you are always on the radio, if you are always on television, you always have to top yourself. You have to create a more wild, more extreme conspiracy theory to keep your audience engaged. You can't just keep coming out with the same line every single day. And so you force, you are compelled to push yourself to ever greater extremes. For Alex Jones, there seemed to be no boundary to his increasingly extreme theories. No tragedy too awful to exploit. I believe that shooting has to Ladies and gentlemen, it is Friday. Thank you so much for joining us the 14th day of December 2012. And there is a reported school shooting uh, in Connecticut. I need it. This is uh, going to be a lot bigger than Columbine. And this is already 18 dead children. In the end, 27 killed. 20 of them elementary school children. Jones seized on the deaths. Boy, wouldn't you know, I mean, it's sick. You can go back in the last month, and I've said over and over again, and you watch, there's gonna be giant school shootings. The moment you see a, a mass shooting event, the mindset inside is, it's probably a false flag operation. It might not be, but it probably is if we start seeing telltale signs of it being staged, we'll let you know. Uh, you know, it has now come out that um, it was a government program and that person was in a mind control program. And this is conspiracy without the theory. The dispenses with, blatantly dispenses with any evidence or argument. It lives by sheer assertion, no evidence, no argument, and the doctor he was under was a head Air Force mind control doctor, and he was involved in DARPA brain interface programs and told people he was under mind control in the jail. He just kept adding more and more and more outrageous lies to the story. Uh, all the pictures of the children inside of it were fake. It was all a CGI construction. Uh, for Jones, it didn't matter how absurd each new layer got. Uh, he would put anything on the air as long as it kept driving the Sandy Hook story. Newtown destroys suspected Sandy Hook shooter's home. Even inside InfoWars, some of Jones's own staff worried about what he was saying. But the media still lies and says he did. Jones had no evidence whatsoever to prove that that didn't happen. And he said it many times because that's just what fit into his worldview. That's what, I mean, on some level, it felt like that's what he wanted it to be. One of Jones's employees, longtime editor Rob Jacobson, brought his concerns directly to Jones. And I stopped him and I was like, Alex, man, they're gonna come after you for Sandy Hook. You know, I was like, look, man, you, this is crazy. And he just stopped and looked at me with no reaction. He had nothing to say to me. Like he just stopped like a deer in headlights. And he wasn't alone. 
I think it's important to note the top editorial person inside of InfoWars desperately warned him and tried to get employees to help warn Alex Jones that what he was doing was very, very bad. He didn't listen. I've looked at it and undoubtedly there's a cover up, there's actors, they're manipulating, they've been caught lying and they were pre-planning before it and rolled out. Jones spared no one. He even went after the families. And Alex Jones looks at those tiny caskets and these grieving parents and decides that he's going to make their lives a living hell by selling this conspiracy theory that Newtown is all a fraud and that these all of these people are actors. Six-year-old Noah Posner was killed by the Sandy Hook shooter, but his family became a victim of Alex Jones. My uh, wife at the time, Noah's mother, uh, did a few interviews, and she became uh, a target. Uh, he accused her of being an actor. I'm grieving, that's all. That became one of the cornerstone conspiracy points for Sandy Hook. The whole thing was fake. I mean, even I couldn't believe it. I knew they jumped on it, used the crisis, hyped it up, but then I did deep research, and my gosh, it just pretty much didn't happen. As Jones added fuel to the fire. We've sent reporters up there, man, and that place is like children of the corn or something. I mean, online conspiracy theorists were attacking the families. From then on, it was an absolute quest to destroy these parents. What a loser. Crisis actor trash. Oh, Lenny, you poser. Take your life. I it spread on the web. YouTube, you Reddit, and 4chan. What kind of name is Noah possibly to a keep boots? They're haters. Outside. They're fools. They're trolls. Anything they can do to trigger trouble in my life, they have done. Bosner changed addresses many times, tried to hide his identity. Still, they found him. I got a call from someone, and I had just moved into new a new apartment. He read me the address that I had just moved into, and he read me my social security number. A woman began stalking Mr. Posner and his family in South Central Florida, started threatening their lives. You're going to die, you mother you bastard. She was an avid follower of Jones and Infowars. And she was soon sent to federal prison for what she was doing. Mr. Jones knew this. He understood this. He absolutely knew what was happening. He wanted Lenny Posner to suffer harm. Posner now lives in hiding. Whatever is happening to these families clearly didn't mean anything to him. It's obvious that, that Jones isn't remorseful or apologetic for, uh, for any of the things that those families had to endure from the words that he dispelled or the ideas that he spread. I genuinely don't think he cares. People close to Jones were appalled about what he had done. It was the last straw for his wife, Kelly. I was very disgusted by what he said. I think I definitely told him, like, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? And they were just so excited that they were getting so many views or whatever that they continued to do this. They filed for divorce in 2013 and have been in a bitter, sometimes public feud ever since. The king of conspiracy, radio show host Alex Jones. Alex Jones, the king of all internet conspiracies. The controversy over Sandy Hook had made Jones bigger than ever. And Alex Jones is pushing a lot of buttons. He was now tapping into not just the conspiracy world, but the country's culture wars and growing populist anger. In hard right politics, he was becoming a player. And the minute people were aware of it, it's over for you. I'm Barack Hussein Obama, do solemnly swear. And in the country's first black president, Jones had another target. And uh, you know, the first black president from Kenya, born in Kenya, boom. Jones pushed the discredited birther theory questioning President Obama's citizenship. 
In birtherism, what you see is a group of Americans who resent the fact that there is an African-American president in the White House. Boom, we're told there is no long form. It doesn't exist. Oh yeah, here it is, it's fake. Alex Jones and all sorts of other people, they hand them this excuse that is, well, he wasn't born in this country and this is really all a lie and that he is actually not who he says he is. This is how they try to start the revolution. Alex this Jones appeals to the worst parts of society and he looks for all the terrible things in society, racism, sexism, misogyny, and he exploits them for his own benefit. This is what they're trying to get going. This is a race war. This is exactly what we predicted. Jones so unabashedly together, exploited race, stoking fear you know, of nothing but white people's cars being stopped by mobs of black people. Sounding alarms. Record numbers of Muslims are being brought in from countries known to be radicalized and who want to attack. Alex Jones is able to tap into some real deep, dark fears that white Americans explicitly have about the future of their country, uh, who's in it, who's controlling it, and their placement in it. He was promoting a politics of conspiracy and lies that would find its moment in 2015. Resistance to tyrants is obedience to God. It's Alex Jones. When he invited a special guest on his program. Uh, he's written the New York Times bestselling book, The Men Who Killed Kennedy. You probably heard of rogerstone.com. Good to see you again, buddy. Alex, great to see you. Thanks for having me. Nobody had any idea at that point that this is somebody that was becoming back again and again and again. Well, Alex, first of all, I want to thank you because nobody has been more effective in terms of uh, revealing the secret game plan of the party kingmakers. Roger Stone was a notorious political operator. Roger Stone is a self-described dirty trickster. A career dating back to Richard Nixon. Has a tattoo of Nixon on his back. Roger is singular in the political landscape. He is a bodybuilding, pot-smoking dandy swinger who has had a profound impact upon shaping all of our lives through his savvy and cunning as a political consultant. He was the chairman of Donald Trump's exploratory campaign. If he talked to Trump this morning, you were telling me off air, Trump's for real. Oh, there's no In question. 2015, Stone had an insight that Alex Jones's audience could help Donald Trump. You can't buy Trump, you can't bully Trump. Alex Jones um, is a, a character. Uh, and he has a very, very large, very, very loyal following out there in the blogosphere. I speak of uh, the devil. Hillary Clinton for prison shirts. We're only selling it, limited edition. Uh, his people are very dedicated. They're very loyal. It, it just looks like a campaign shirt. Hillary for prison 2016. Stone was getting a big platform out of Jones. Where do you want to start, Mr. Stone? Stone could come on Jones' show and talk to what would ultimately be millions of people. I think that Jones was getting some type of validation from Stone. They can call us conspiracy theorists. As you know, that's a way to try to discredit us. All we are is truth tellers. We speak from the heart, like Donald Trump. We speak from the heart and let the chips fall where they may. As the first Republican primaries approached, Donald Trump was a long shot. Stone wanted him to make an important connection. Well, I don't usually get butterflies about a guest on the show. Donald Trump is our guest, ladies and gentlemen, for the next 30 minutes or so. He is the leading 2016 Republican presidential contender, Donald Trump. It was a signal to Jones's literally millions of followers that Trump was the man to support in the Republican primary. And I've got so many questions, but but first off, uh, Donald, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Alex. Great, great to be with you. Trump recognized the power of Alex Jones's audience and Alex Jones's base and had mirrored a lot of Alex Jones's policies and rhetoric in achieving and getting to that front runner status in the first place. I know now from top people that you actually are for real. Alex was only too happy to play sycophants is epic. It's George Washington level. And you understand that all. And Trump basked in the glow of his adulation. And so I think it was 
purely transactional, and it worked out great for both of them. I just want to finish by saying your reputation's amazing. I will not let you down. You will be very, very uh, impressed, I hope. He said, I have so much admiration for you. You have such an audience. I mean, this is what Trump cared about. You have such, you have such influence. Uh, we're going to be talking a lot. I'm going to be relying on you. I hope you can help uncripple America. Thank you so much, sir. That You will be attacked for coming on, and we know you know that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Alex Jones, like President Trump, they come from this fringe. They come from a place that people maybe poked fun of them. They come from this place where people maybe didn't take them seriously, but they they claw their way to the center of American politics. They've destroyed our economy. Roger delivers legitimacy to Alex Jones, and Alex Jones delivers to Trump a disaffected voter that Trump desperately needed to bring to the polls in order to win. And that was, I think, in a lot of ways, the difference maker. Jones boasted about his impact on the candidate. And I'll tell you, it is surreal to talk about issues here on air and then word for word hear Trump say it two days later. I mean, sometimes it was like verbatim, like, really, Trump, really? You're taking his word for it? You don't have anybody else around you? As we've been saying for three years, Hillary is the founder of ISIS along with Obama. I would say the co-founder would be crooked Hillary Clinton. Buzz Cruz's father linked the JFK assassination. Cuban hired by Lee Harvey Oswald bears striking resemblance to Cruz. And, you know, his father was with Lee Harvey Oswald prior to Oswald's being, uh, you know, shot. I mean, the whole thing is ridiculous. And I think it was a superpower trip for Alex that was irresistible. I said he's going to use executive orders to go after our guns. The president's thinking about signing an executive order where he wants to take your guns away. You hear it this way. Someone this in the, the mainstream, news. Trump, using the words that Jones had been using for decades, um, I think that emboldened Jones and it changed him as a personality. These people are not freaking humans, okay? Hillary Clinton is a demon damned to hell. He made a deal with the devil. She's the devil. He made a deal with the devil. Big shock was Alex having the ear of a you know, president to be. That that was the biggest shock. Of all the people I've interviewed over 35 years, I can think of a, a lot of people I would rather have the president's ear than Alex Jones. <laughs> it's a bit of a shame that one of the most um, spiraling people I've ever met is the one who's influencing Trump. The National Convention kicks off in Cleveland, Ohio tomorrow. He's on Cleveland, the 2016 Republican National Convention. Almost two decades after peddling conspiracy theories on late night cable TV. All right, let's just cover this thing. Alex Jones arrived at the Republican National Convention. That summer was particularly important for Jones because he was on the rise at the time. I come to see Alex Jones, put that on CNN. <laughs> God bless you, brother. God bless you, Alex. Thank you. Normally, you would expect Alex Jones to be outside the barricades with a bullhorn. But all of a sudden, there he was, making his way through. He was a part of things, because this was an administration that not only embraces people like him and like Roger Stone and people who were kind of, you know, practicing the sort of conspiratorial dark arts. Conspiratorial thinking is a feature of this president. Inside the convention, Jones immediately sought out controversy. He crashed the set of a live left-wing television show. It's that it overcomes every other you demographic advantage. Hillary has. Come sit in your lap. Oh, oh, How's it going? Right. Hey, Come Alex on. Jones, how you doing? Good to see you, man. You're like, Alex, no! Okay. Uh, oh, don't Jones had a contentious relationship with the Young Turks. They both decided to interrupt their live show. There were people everywhere. And I remember trying to hold my camera up to film what was going on. Um, there were people scrambling everywhere, people screaming at each other. Let me explain something, all right? I mean, it was a spectacle, it was, it was ridiculous. But I mean, honestly, it, that was par for the course. That was daily life with Jones. What do you think, the lizard people are in charge? No. Is that what you think? Hey, your parents are For him, it was always like, let's create chaos. Yeah. Oh, 
because chaos is entertaining and people are going to tune into that. And they just decided to go for it. They had a preternatural sense that that would be a big to-do. The objective is always to get clicks, to get eyeballs, and to convert that into financial gain. Chaos, conflict, conspiracy. In 2016, Jones and Stone were rewriting the playbook of American politics. And that was another moment where you realize this whole landscape has changed. And these individuals that could so easily be dismissed have become a force to be reckoned with. Person, but with Hillary, there's not even the same universe. I mean, she is an abject, psychopathic demon from hell. With Election Day looming, on InfoWars, Jones went all in attacking Hillary Clinton. It's so evil and so People loved this conspiracist claim. If you needed more <laughs> to lock her up, he was the more. But it was really a, a portrait of her as a woman who would do anything. Anything. I will warn you. Uh, this story that's been the biggest thing on the internet is a rabbit hole that is horrifying to go down. Now, this is tied into Podesta with thousands of emails with, we're going to have the six-year-old, the seven-year-old. It was an internet conspiracy theory, sparked by stolen emails from Clinton's campaign chairman, John Podesta, claiming that references to cheese pizza were code for child pornography. And why did the Podesta emails mention the code word pasta for either little boy or sex 78 times? Code word cheese for little girl 85 times. They were ready to believe just about anything about Hillary Clinton. Do you think I'll do better playing dominoes on cheese than on pasta? The belief that evildoers are meeting in secret to abuse children is really old. The blood libel. The best known example of that is from the Middle Ages. The idea that Jews were meeting in secret to murder Christian children and use their blood in rituals. And we can see elements of the blood libel in a lot of conspiracy theories even through the present day. On Twitter, they called the blood libel hashtag Pizzagate. Pizzagate has elements of blood libel within it. The allegation? a child sex ring run out of the basement of a DC pizza parlor. So Comet Ping Pong. Comet right Ping Pong. WikiLeaks have come out with Podesta going to rituals where they drink blood and urine and semen. Oh my gosh, Jones is having the time of his life. Yes, I have a responsibility to cover it, and yes, it's important. I mean, he was in high dungeon. They hurt children, folks. He's crying. He's weeping, we're like, this is pure evil. Yeah, cover Pizzagate, we have covered it, we are covering it, and all I know is God help us, we're in the hands of pure evil. And it ran constantly, because it was a ratings getter. When I think about all the children Hillary Clinton has personally murdered and, and chopped up and, and, and raped. His profile raised by Trump and Stone, Jones was known as a super spreader a megaphone for internet lies and misinformation. I just can't hold back the truth anymore. Hillary Clinton is one of the most vicious serial killers the planet's ever seen. A match was struck on Alex Jones' show, and it goes from zero to 100 on Google Trends. 96 hours. Thousands of emails? I'm not ready to accuse of these people of this. It's up to you to research it for yourself, but you got Yeah, I mean, Alex would always encourage people, like, I can't do this alone. You know, he'd always encourage people to go out and do those things by themselves. Some of them took matters into their own hands. Girls. A volunteer firefighter in, in North Carolina, Edgar Madison Welsh. Here's the stories about Pizzagate being promoted by Alex Jones and others, and uh, decides somebody has to do something about it. Somebody has to save these kids. He's basically making a goodbye video. His two daughters, like in the car on the way driving north on 95. I can't let you grow up in the world for such a rough life. I mean, he believed it. So this guy, Welsh, you know, armed with an assault rifle, 
barges into the restaurant on a Sunday afternoon, um, fires two shots as he goes looking for the mythical basement where the kids are supposedly being trafficked. Um, and of course, uh, never finds it. Wells discovered there was no basement, no pedophile ring. It on the ground, they throw it on the ground. Welch would later tell a New York Times reporter, the intel on this wasn't 100%. These conspiracies, some may think, well, they're harmless. But then we have somebody who shows up at a pizza establishment with a weapon. I mean, there, people will act on these things. We will see violence from this sort of stirring up of hatred and division. And the Pizzagate conspiracy theory is exhibit A. I'm going to read to you from a statement that's also posted to Infowars.com that I wrote yesterday. Under legal threat from the owner of Comet Ping Pong, Alex Jones would eventually retract his Pizzagate claims. In our commentary about what had become known as Pizzagate, I made comments that in hindsight I regret and for which I apologize to him. Alex Jones had become a powerful and dangerous voice. His influence confirmed with the inauguration in 2017. Final preparations are underway for the inauguration today. Set to become America's 45th president today. Beginning a new era, a new trend. He'd reached the center of American politics and power. Live in Washington, D.C., here is Alex Jones. To make America great again and the whole rest of the planet and have a new age of trade, low taxes, and, 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 and peace. Economic growth and peace. Today is a victory for the revolution. Let's get in. This is a giant playground for fans of conspiracy theories. Conspiracy theories were now emanating directly from the White House. He had a larger inaugural crowd than Barack Obama. If they spied on my campaign, it will be one of the as president, Trump veered from one unsupported claim to the next. He claimed up to five million illegal votes cost him the popular vote. Facing Hillary... backlash tonight for his denial of Hurricane Maria's... Death. President Trump is someone who has realized that conspiracy theories work for him. If he's going to be able to keep his base happy, he has to continue to feed them red meat, and that red meat consists a lot of times of, of conspiracy theories. If you have a windmill anywhere near your house, they say the noise causes cancer. You tell me that one, okay? The windmills <laughs> cause cancer, but for fact's sake, that is just not no true. There was no collision, there was no obstruction, everybody knows it. It's all a big hoax. It's, I call it the witch hunt. It's all a big deal to Russia with Clinton help and Obama administration knowledge is the biggest story that fake media doesn't want. Jones was on a high. They write my stuff in the speeches and Trump approves it. It's like with Trump, he goes, okay, uh, yeah, that, that, that's right. I had these conversations with Trump. I start talking. He finishes the sentence. I finish the sentence. It's weird, man. It's weird. And so someone like Alex Jones who can come in with wild theories, and Donald Trump repeats it as fact. You have newspapers printing it as fact. You have media and television shows repeating it as though it's fact. And then you have Donald Trump tweeting it as though it's fact. We are in a position where many Americans are susceptible to not just false information, but lies that they believe is true. But with influence came a new level of scrutiny. Would you raise your right hand, please, sir? You do solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Thank you. Those parents from Sandy Hook had been pursuing him in court. I simply had enough, and that was what needed to be done. I'm proud of bringing the lawsuit. Uh, brought a lot more attention to who he really is and what his show represents. Can you now admit that you've done an outrageous wrong to these parents? Can you admit that? You know, the, the mainstream media is who always takes it, makes it a huge issue, and then says that I'm saying it and gets me to respond. And, and it's lawyers like you and, and, and people that glom onto this for fame that then try to get the fame and then say that I'm the person that's promoting it. And it, it's obscene in my view. It was at this point that Jones shocked Posner's attorney. 
Mr. Jones claimed that the reason that he said that Sandy Hook was fake is because he was suffering from a kind of psychosis. And I've, you know, I myself have, you know, almost had like a form of psychosis back in the past where I basically thought everything was staged. You know, I've now learned a lot of times things aren't staged. Because it wasn't just about Sandy Hook. What, what he was saying is that there's a psychosis I have, some form of psychosis that makes me believe that every event is staged. My opinions have been wrong, but they were never wrong consciously. In other words, for Jones, it's a universal pass. Under oath, Jones made a reluctant uh, admission. And, and, and so over the years, I've, you know, especially as it became a huge issue, had time to you know, really retrospectively think about it. Uh, and, and his whole thing matured, you know, had, had, had a chance to believe that children died, uh, and it's a tragedy. As far as I'm concerned, I've already won. Having Alex Jones admit under oath that Noah did die the way it was reported in his school, that's a victory for me. The lawsuits would continue. Alex Jones banned from Facebook and from YouTube. But they were just the beginning of Jones's problems. Alex Jones has been deleted, digitally deplatformed. Apple, Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, Pinterest, and LinkedIn have all- Jones took his case to Washington. They're gonna have the heads of Facebook and Twitter up there. He had been deplatformed, banned by the social media giants for dehumanizing language, glorifying violence, hate speech, there was a backlash. There was a backlash where people started to really try to examine this person. They started to review internally, you know, are we monetizing this guy? Are we supporting the horrible things that he's doing? Jones tried to portray it as a conspiracy by the deep state and globalists. I am here because there is a concerted effort by the Democratic Party and multinational corporations and big tech to silence conservative and nationalist and populist voices and that's why I've been targeted. So I can't have a press conference. As you can see in America, cannot face my accusers. The tech giants were incredibly slow to respond to what Mr. Jones was doing. He, they were more than happy to allow Mr. Jones to make money for their platforms causing mayhem and hysteria. They were absolutely happy to do it. And at some point it became too much for them and some of it became this lawsuit. Some of it became Mr. Jones's conduct. Those around Jones saw something else. Revenge from the left for Jones's alliance with Trump. My own view is that it has the fingerprints of an organized attack. Within two years of Trump's election, he faces an onslaught of lawsuits from all across the country, like the kind he had never faced before, and he is completely removed from almost every social media platform and his voice is censored or silenced, it's an unprecedented attack on any individual that I've ever witnessed. By 2020, Alex Jones was exploiting another national tragedy, the coronavirus pandemic. Inside our government to create the fear and allow the nation to never reopen. This is a Chi-Com globalist bioweapon and to shut down our economy. Fear, economic collapse, partisan division. USA, 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 USA. And he was still in lockstep with the president. Later, the Democratic Party, the liberals are cheering this virus. Now the Democrats are politicizing the coronavirus, you know that, right? Coronavirus. They're politicizing it. And soon, race would emerge again, too. George Floyd, bombed out of his brain on fentanyl, died. So what's all this so-called rioting about? It's not about injustice, it's about control and power. All fuel for the fire, stoked by Trump and Jones. But they want to keep us locked in our homes. It is a chi -Con laboratory experiment. And guess what? After November 3rd, coronavirus will magically all of a sudden go away. Conspiracism has become a recognized and accepted 
way of exercising political power. A lot of people are saying it may have been a biological weapon that potentially may have leaked out of Wuhan. Creates a kind of polarization in the population that's much deeper than partisan polarization. George Floyd was actually killed three years ago in Texas. White supremacist organizations as being responsible for some of the violence. It's a polarization about what it means to know something. Total population control. I think it's likely to spread across the political spectrum. The foreign government could try to steal the election by printing absentee and mail in. Whether it returns to the fringes or not will depend on whether people in office can resist using it. They rigged an election. They rigged it like they've never rigged an election before. We won in a landslide. This was a landslide. 400,000 ballots appeared from nowhere. We will stop the steal. We're going to walk down to the Capitol, and I'll be there with you. Fight like hell. And if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. Today is not the end, it's just the beginning. For more on this and other Frontline programs, visit our website at pbs.org frontline. Frontline's United States of Conspiracy is available on Amazon Prime Video.